Hi, welcome to the RPB Resonance Commission. Now, we are going to discuss about uh, applications of crystal field splitting energy. Now here, CFSC applications. So the first application is hydration energy. The first application is hydration energy. Before going to the topic, we are discussing about a very small basic point regarding to the hydration energy. Now, generally, hydration energy. Now, I have the any metal cation. Whenever this metal cation, which is produced from the salt, salt dissolved in water, it produces the metal cation and the halide anion. Again, it having several number of water molecule, which is coordinated with water molecule like this M plus N. Now here maybe water, 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 like this. So the lone pair of electrons which forms the metal cation through the coordinate covalent bond, which forms the metal cation through the coordinate covalent bond. So it forms the a primary shell interaction, a primary shell. interaction now here the primary in the primary shell so the six water molecules can coordinate it with a metal cation again which touches with a six water molecules then it forms the hexa coordinated complex hexa coordinated complex with some metal charge some metal positive charge now however it uh, it is uh, it having the different different uh, primary uh, secondary tertiary cells also so it is the sum of the another interaction like a secondary interaction that is secondary interaction also there but uh, we will consider the primary shell interaction again it forms the some complex ion it forms the complex ion this is called the total process is called hydration total process is called hydration whenever a metal cation hydrated then it forms the you know, hexa coordinated hydrated complex not only hexa whatever it may be any coordinated complex it releases some energy it releases some energy so that energy is called hydration energy that energy is called hydration energy so this energy is nothing but a hydration energy so now before going to the hydration energy topic, we are deal with uh, how uh, the trends of uh, hydration energy in periodic table from left to right, what will happen uh, top to bottom, what will happen in groups. Now let us discuss the those trends which are regarding to the hydration energy, which are regarding to the hydration energy. Now the first the first one is so left to right. Uh, Atomic size, atomic radius decreases across the periods. Uh, we, we are knowing that. We know that. Okay. Now the first one is effective nuclear charge is inversely proportional to the cation size of a cation. Effective nuclear charge is inversely proportional to the size of cation. So left to right, uh, size of cation decreases. That means uh, effective nuclear charge uh, increases the across the period. Effective nuclear charge increases the across increases across the period across the period we know that again size of cation decreases across the period decreases across the period so whenever uh, we have this some um, um, uh, simple complex simple ion then there is no uh, charge over there now it forms the simple simple one simple element now, however, here it loss of one electron takes place, one electron removes from the simple one, then it forms the plus one complex, plus one metal ion, then it gives lesser size than that of a compared uh, parent one, lesser size than that of a parent one. Again, one more electron loss takes place, now it forms the plus two complex, which is very lesser, very, very lesser than the first and second ones. Now, however, another electron loss loss taking place, then it, it gives very lesser size, that means, so, charge on the complex or metal ion increases atomic size decreases charge on the complex uh, increase complex increases then atomic size decreases so now we are uh, another property is magnitude charge on cation increases so atomic size decreases size of cation inversely proportional to size of the cation inversely proportional whenever the best example is na plus mg plus 2 
AL plus 3. Among these three, here AL plus 3 means it is a very lesser size. So the size is like this, very lesser, larger size. So now here the mag more magnitude charge, lesser the size, less, less magnitude charge, higher the size. So with the help of these three theories, we can conclude, we can conclude the hydration energy of a, a cations, hydration energy of a cations. Generally, the less size of cation, which pronounces more, more hydration, which attract the more number of a hydrated molecule, which attract the more number of hydrated molecule. Whenever, uh, which is a uh, six water molecule can approach us to the metal cation, two very smaller metal cation, again it forms the complex, now it releases more hydration energy, it releases more hydration energy, that means lesser size of the cation, higher the hydration energy, lesser size of the cation, higher the hydration energy, that means hydration energy is inversely proportional to the size of cation, very simple logic, hydration energy is inversely proportional to the size of the cation, we are know that Effective nuclear charge also is inversely proportional to the size of cation. That's why we are considered hydration energy is directly proportional to the effective nuclear charge. Is directly proportional to the effective nuclear charge. So finally, what we conclude? So in across the period left to right, uh, atomic radii decreases across the period left to to right, atomic radii decreases as well as effective nuclear charge increases, effective nuclear charge increases. Now, let us go with uh, our D, D complexes, like in transitional metal complexes. Transitional metal complexes. One minute. Okay. Before going to the topic, we have discussed about a very small topic, very small concept. That is, that is nothing but acidity of a aqua complexes, acidity of aqua complexes. So this is very useful. Uh, I think uh, a regular question from CSR, uh, last five years, regular question. Mm. So now we are discussing about a very smaller size cation. So in generally periodic table, chromium plus three, Al plus three, Mn, uh, I think uh, iron plus three, these three are the smaller cations in our periodic table, plus three. Okay, now chromium forms the hexa, hexa coordinated complex. Hexa coordinated complex. Now, whenever, so the oxygen atom cannot approach us to the central metal atom. Now it forms the good dipolar between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Whenever it loses the electron pair to the central metal atom, now here oxygen uh, having the lesser electronic cloud, lesser electronic cloud, that's why those bonded two electrons from the hydrogen atom, it pulls towards itself, it pulls towards itself, then chromium, oxygen, plus hydrogen. So this hydrogen far away from the oxygen, that means we are more and more positive charge pronounced, we are more and more positive charge created, that means more and more positive charge means it readily leaves from the parent position. So the loss of hydride ion, the loss of hydride ion, so whenever we treated with base or water molecule, it forms the hydronium ion. It forms the hydronium ion. That means uh, the loss of H plus, that means uh, the loss of a proton is nothing but acidity. The loss of a proton is nothing but uh, acidity. Now we have discussed lesser size of the cation readily up, up, approaches the central, uh, like uh, aqua complexes. That means uh, lesser size of the cations uh, readily gives their H plus protons, their H plus protons. That means lesser size of the cations lesser size of the cations, higher acidity, higher hydration energy, higher hydration energy. So final conclusion is higher the hydration energy, greater the acidity, higher the hydration energy, greater the acidity. Now we will go with the transition metal complex. Now we will go with the transitional metal complexes. We have the several formulas. So first one, hydration energy inversely proportional to the size of the cation, size of the cation. So again, hydration energy is directly proportional to the effective nuclear charge, effective nuclear charge. Okay, now let us take the uh, simple examples from 
transitional metal elements. So we will plot the graph between the metal plus two cations versus hydration enthalpy versus hydration enthalpy or hydration energy. Now let us start it with uh, calcium plus two. That means a D zero configuration. Then scandium plus two, titanium plus two, vanadium plus two, chromium plus two, manganese plus two, iron plus two, cobalt plus two, nickel plus two, copper plus two, zinc plus two. So these ten are the uh, these eleven are the our metal plus two complexes. So we know the trend of uh, periods left to right size will be decreases left, left to right uh, size decreases across the period across the period that means left to right size of the cation decreases it having the higher the hydration energy higher the hydration energy so from left to right uh, hydration energy increases gradually increases gradually now we expected a straight line from calcium to zinc we expected a straight line to calcium, calcium to zinc. So let us take in this line in dotted one. This line in dotted one. So we expected from calcium to zinc a straight line. A straight line. So those are represented with the circles like titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. So this is our expectation diagram with respect to the hydration energy or hydration enthalpy, hydration enthalpy. But uh, experimentally, experimentally it shown some deviation, it shown some deviation. So those deviations are regarding to the our CFSE value. So our CFSE value. Finally, what we conclude, the hydration energy is nothing but expected hydration energy, expected hydration energy plus CFSE value plus CFSE value. So it was proven by the experimental. It was a, a clue, the, those two values very closer to the our experimental value. So that's why we are taking expected hydration energy plus crystal field stabilization energy. Both will give the perfect hydration energy. Perfect hydration energy. Let us take the uh, SP uh, crystal field stabilization energy value. Calcium plus 2 means here D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, D9, D10. So these are the electrons. From left to right, D electrons are also increases. Now here, D0 means uh, the CFSE value 0. CFSE value 0. So CFSE value which is shown by the thick dotted line, thick dotted point. Now scandium plus 2 means D1. D1, we are knowing that the calculation of CFSE, 0 0.4 into T2G electron plus 0 0.6 into EZ electrons. So now here minus and plus which is taken in the modulus. So now we have the only one electron that means 0 0.4 into 1 into delta O. That means it is minus 0 0.4 delta O. Here we are taking in the modulus that means uh, 0 0.4 delta O. So D1 case 0 0.4 delta O. So which is like this 0 0.4 delta O. Now here in our D2 means uh, 0 0.8. We are not calculated everything here. I will calculate it, these values and I will give the link uh, over there. Please click and show the CFSE value calculations. Now here, t, t, titanium plus 2 means D2. That is uh, another value. It's something over there. Now D3 is having the value 1.2. 1.2 delta O. Here 0 0.8 delta O. Now however, Chromium plus 2 means it is 0 0.6 delta O, 0 0.6 delta O. And Mn plus 2, it is 0. Mn plus 2 means CFSE value 0. Now, however, Fe plus 2 means D6, it is the value 0 0.4, 0 0.4. D7 means 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Nickel plus 2 means 1.2. Nickel plus 2 means 1.2. D9 configuration means 1 0 0.6 as uh, usual the final d10 is equal to 0 d10 is equal to 0 now we will connect the those points with the dotted lines or whatever it may be which line so dotted representation is better right So now we will get the hump, a hump manner. Now we will get in a hump manner. 
So these two humps we will get two humps. So it it seems to be double hump. It is deviated to double hump configuration. However, here calcium plus two, manganese plus two, zinc plus two does not change their high original hydration value with the expected hydration value. Very closer to those two experimental values. That's why these these three are not changed. These three are not changed. In case of vanadium plus three and nickel plus two, it's shown a large value. It's shown a large value. That's why there's those two having the higher the hydration energy. D8 and D3 which shown larger hydration energy. Maybe question like that. Question came like that. Now finally, uh, nickel plus two is greater than that of all the values, all the values. But exceptionally, Sriver Sutkin books they are given in very particular value regarding to nickel plus two and copper plus two values. So no book is clear about uh, these two values. But Sriver Sutkin is very clear in about that it is two thousand nine hundred and eight six kilojoules. It is two thousand nine hundred and eight nine kilojoules. That's why I will write uh, some of the top side of a uh, um, position. From the copper plus two, where here nickel is very lesser than that of copper. Here two thousand nine hundred and eighty-six. Here two thousand nine hundred and eighty-nine. Two thousand eight hundred and eighty-nine. So very simply, we will write like this. So which is easily remembering text. Two thousand nine hundred and eighty-six. So this is the hydration energy graph between the metal plus two cations. The hydration energy or hydration enthalpy value. Again, the similar way. So calcium uh, metal plus three are cations are also possible. Metal plus three means here calcium uh, scandium plus three we will get D zero configuration. Again, a titanium plus three also D zero configuration. Vanadium plus three D two. Chromium plus three D three. Again, manganese plus three. Iron plus three. Cobalt plus three. Nickel plus three. Copper plus three. Zinc plus three. Again, gallium plus three. I think it is gallium. So gallium plus three. So these plus three are also shown like this. So originally the values are nickel plus two. So according to Silver Sutkin, can only give us the uh, full clear cut information about nickel plus two as well as copper plus two. The remaining all are shown. So nickel plus two shown higher the value when compared to copper one. But Silver uh, uh, Sutkin can only tell us about uh, the nickel plus two and copper plus two value. So according to that book, I obey with that book only. The remaining all are I I did I did not refer to the remaining books regarding to this topic only. So copper plus two, nickel plus two. Then after so zinc plus two. So then, uh, cobalt plus two. Then final uh, iron plus two. So remaining are like that. Iron plus two. After the iron plus two, we will get a vanadium plus. After that, a manganese. Then after uh, sorry, after the vanadium, we will get a chromium. After the chromium, we will get a manganese. Then after titanium. Then after scandium. Final one is calcium plus two. Now I will repeat it again. So copper plus two, nickel plus two, zinc plus two, cobalt plus two, iron plus two. Then after vanadium plus two, chromium plus two, manganese plus two. Then titanium, scandium, calcium. So these are the hydration energy values so deferred. They are expected values. We we will consider their de deviation with the help of crystal field stabilization energy values. With the help of crystal field stabilization energy values. Now we will go with some of the problems regarding to the hydration energy. Now, before going to the CSI problems, so now I'm looking out to solve the a simple exercise problem. So, calculate the hydration energy without a CFSC for chromium plus two complexes. Here they are given in the delta O value, which is nothing but 12,000 centimeter inverse. Here they are given the hydration energy with the CFSC value. We know that the formula of hydration energy with CFSC means hydration energy plus CFSC value. So they are asking about hydration energy, which is nothing but without CFSC, without a CFSC. So let us imagine our graph, double humped graph. They are asking about uh, this CFSC value for chromium. Chromium means uh, here. So they are asking about CFSC value. They are given the hydration energy value. Sorry, they are asking about this hydration energy value. They are already given the given this hydration energy value along with the CFSC. First of all, we want to calculate the CFSC value. So, uh, in generally, hydration energy means aqua means uh, they forms the high spin complexes. Aqua means they forms the high spin complexes. So, CFSC is equal to chromium plus two. That means D four configuration. D four means uh, it is the weak field complexes. Now, the electron field like this. 
that means t2 g3 e g1 t2 g3 e g1 so that means a cfsc is equal to 3 into minus 0.4 plus 1 into 0.6 and now we will get a 0.1.2 plus 0.6 minus 0.6 delta o minus 0.6 delta o so they are given the delta o value also now we substitute the delta o value now we will get a approximately 0.6 into 12000 cm inverse now we will get a 7000 7200 cm inverse 7200 cm inverse now we want to convert the kilojoules so 1 kilojoule is equal to 83.4 joules 83.4 cm inverse cm inverse so now we want to convert the value into kilojoules minus 72000 by 83.4 it is approximately 86 kilojoules 86 kilojoules now we substitute those two values in our equation hydration energy hydration energy is equal to hydration energy without cfsc without cfsc plus cfsc value so now they are given the hydration energy which is nothing but 640 kilojoules here Uh, hydration energy we want to calculate this so cfsc value is equal to minus 86 kilojoules minus 86 kilojoules now here this is also kilojoules this is also kilojoules so now hydration energy is equal to minus 640 plus 86 kilojoules minus 640 plus 86 kilojoules approximately 438 that means 5 5 minus 544 kilojoules this is the this is the method how to solve the problems regarding to the hydration energy now please share comment and subscribe it thank you for watching